legendary Roloflex 2.8F. <sighs> Should you buy one of these? Yes and no. I love this camera. Why did I ever get one of these? You've heard of Vivian Meyer, right? Did she shoot with the 28F? No, she did not. She shot with the Roloflex 3.5. Um, I don't know the model that she did, but I remember just looking at her work. There was one day where I literally spent eight hours on the internet scouring her work. And I had just moved to Hawaii and I was like, every time I moved someplace new, I always got a new camera to kind of like see if this is what was gonna vibe for what I was shooting. And it did, that, that was the camera that I shot for almost five years straight before I sold it. The rendition of that Zeiss glass is just, so sharp, so tack sharp. And I found this one on eBay that said it had been CLA'd by Harry Fleener, so I bought it. Who's Harry Fleener? Harry Fleener is a guy in San Diego, I think it's called Oceanside Camera. I've never met him, but I've sent everyone that shoots rollies to send it to him. His turnaround times are pretty, what you would expect in 2023 takes like six months to get the camera back from him, but you get it back from him, it's like God touched your camera. It's gonna work forever. Uh, this model actually has a bright screen in it, which is really great. I would never buy a Roloflex that wasn't CLA'd because this camera's from like 1964. So why did I sell my original Roloflex? Love that camera, just burned so much film through it. Uh, all of the Kahuku football that I ever shot was on a Roloflex, the one that I always had. The problem with the one that I had was on the the taking lens, the coating on the element was deteriorating. And the longer I was staying in Hawaii, the more it deteriorated. So this was really great in open shade, but backlit, it would give me this like iris in the middle of my photo. Uh, I ran 10 rolls of, through this yesterday and realized how much and why I love it so much. I will tell you the one downfall with these cameras, it happens a lot. It's really hard to find one. If you get it sealed by, Harry Fleener, um, he'll fix it, but the light meter, uh, which is on the side here, right? You've got your dials up top here. This controls your shutter speed. And this controls your f-stops. And as you change that, this uh, light meter on the side, which is uh, through these little like things on the, on the bottom of the waist level finder, this breaks a lot, it just doesn't work. But let's be honest. I'm not buying a, a 1964 Roloflex 2.8F for the light meter. I'm buying it for the optics and the ability to walk around shooting like this, right? So this is what, this is my little trick with Roloflexes. If I'm street shooting and I wanna take somebody's portrait and I'm just focusing, that guy looks at me and I look, so I'll look up and I'll look past them. Like I'm looking at whatever that is. And then, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, he's not taking my photo, it's fine. And then I'm like, click, and I did. Let me show you how quiet uh, this shutter speed is. So let's go to 15th of a second, 2.8. I've got Acros 100 in here. Here we go, one, two, three. Did you hear that? If you didn't, let's do it again. I'm gonna shoot this now at eighth of a second. There. Now, is that eighth of a second gonna be in focus? I'm not sure. 15th of a second, 30th of a second. I'll shoot a whole family session as long as they're not moving, 30th of a second on this. Why? This is leaf shutter. There, there's two types of shutters and cameras. There's focal plane and leaf shutter. Focal plane is probably what you're used to in your DSLR or like a 35 millimeter like Nikon, F100, F5, or a Canon. It's the shutter in the back and it goes up to probably like 8,000th of a second. In this, the shutter is actually inside the taking lens, okay? And the limiting part on that is that it goes to 500th of a second. Because the shutter is inside the lens, there's no mirror popping up. I can hand hold this two stops slower than any other camera that I normally could. That is incredible to me. Like I can walk around and shoot in lighting situations that I know my other one can't. And the other thing I love about this, now you can get these cameras with the waist level finder as shown here, right? It's got that little pop-up little thing that you can kind of magnify. I don't have the best of eyes, so I have to keep my eye to it. You could get a waist level finder, and that means you're gonna bring it up to here like this. Um, that's gonna bring attention, and it's gonna bring attention like you normally would with any other camera. I love waist level finders. Now, remember, waist level finders, when you're looking down, everything is backwards. So if I'm looking down and I wanna go right, I gotta go left. If I'm looking down and I wanna go 
left, I gotta go right, <laughs> I gotta go right. It's flipped. I became so accustomed to these that if I put a prism on it that corrected for it, I was, I, I don't know what to do. It's weird. On the back, it has this like little uh, exposure guide. I don't know how much I've used that. I'm using a handheld light meter or just, you know, the meter on your phone. And it's really easy to focus. It focuses from like three feet to infinity. The nice thing is you focus closer, it does internal parallax error. So what you see here is what you get because you have two lenses here, right? You've got a, uh, the viewing and the taking. On a Yashka mat, 124G, there is not parallax error. So the closer I get, right, what I'm actually taking is below. So like the photos you'll get, they look weird because it's not how you framed it. Where here, no matter how I point the camera, no matter how close or far away I am, I'll get photos back the way I exactly framed it. Now, I think in my opinion, at least for the work that I do, I can't own this camera without a close-up filter. Again, this focuses to three feet. Uh, anything before that, you're not, you can't take photos. So that's basically like waste to here, right? With a little bit of space on top. I'd like to do some tight portraits. So you get a Roland R1, that's the plus one filter. They come in three. There's Roland R1, Roland R2, and Roland R3. Three is if you're shooting like, I don't know, you want super close-ups of this, right? Um, or like jewelry or small little details. I would never, if I was shooting babies a lot, I'd have a Roland R2. I don't know if I'd have a three. Three is just too much. But you know, they come in sets, you got the money, you wanna do it, cool. The size on these are called Bay 3, Bay 111. When you get it, it's a set. There's a thick lens and a thin lens. The thin lens goes on the bottom, on the taking lens, and the fat one goes on the top. On the lens, there's a red dot. That red dot always has to be at the top. Because if you look at that uh, close-up lens, it's kind of tilted this way. So it's correcting for what you're seeing. That's why the thick one goes on top. One thing to realize is if you do put a Roland R1 on, you're now basically focusing from like two and a half feet to, I don't know the exact parameters, but I'd say it's about one and a half feet. It's about a one foot thing. Like you can be really close to something. Anything outside of that will not be in focus. You can't focus to infinity. You gotta take the thing off, put it in your pocket, and then you can go back to work. You know, I had these grand ideas that if I had one, I could be Vivian Meyer. I'm not Vivian Meyer, and you're not Vivian Meyer. <laughs> but the experience of shooting it, you can share that with Vivian Meyer. You know, she was doing things in the 50s and 60s, just coming up to people and street shooting that really didn't exist back then. People weren't using cameras that way. They, everyone does it now. I mean, you could do the sports minder and like go like that, you know? And I don't know how that really works and I don't know how to get this out now that I've done that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> um, there is something to be said about shooting with a waist level finder. Um, there's also something to be said about square. There's something really to be said about the Zeiss lens, this 2.8F. Is it better than the 3.5? <sighs> Depends on your budget. I'll be honest, if you can't afford a 2.8, I would get the 3.5. No one is the wiser. It's just a piece of history, right? You've got the flash settings on the side. You always wanna have it on the lightning bolt and not the flat, the, the light bulb, unless you're using those old ones that go poof. You'll stick your sync cord right into here. It's very simple. There's, you can set your ISO on this way. If your light meter works, this one isn't working, so it doesn't matter what I set the ISO to. Your shutter speeds, again, 500 all the way down to one second, it'll go fast at 30 seconds, eight seconds, 30 seconds, 60 seconds. You wanna make sure that your shutter speed dial is on the number, not in between. That's how you'll break this camera. Just for the sake of it, for all you film diehards, I'm gonna open this up and ruin a roll of film because I wanna show you how you load it. So on the bottom, you got this little thing that locks it. This, when you undo this, it pulls away from the body. When you lock it, there's this little hole that holds onto this thing, so it's never gonna pop open. We're gonna do this, we're gonna ruin this film. This, this pains my heart, but here we go. There's the film. Pull this out and ruin this Acros film. Whee! Let's wind this back up like as if nothing ever happened. This is so messy. Here I am. 
Here's some advantages about this. This is what I really love about this camera because you can be real fast with it. Like a, loading a Hasselblad, Jesus Christ. It's like loading a Leica. It's like someone was like, you know what? I know you're gonna love this camera so much. So I'm gonna put this middle finger like roadblock and like you gotta get the, the paper underneath this thing. It's not like that at all. Um, here, there it is. If you wanna zoom in on this, there's the little sticker that says CLA by Harry Fleener. This is where the film goes. And so I'm gonna put this taking spool up here and just kind of close that down. There, just pops into place, real easy. The film goes this way. It doesn't go under. Like you don't wanna see the black. You wanna see the top of the paper when you load it in. Pull this thing out, kind of turn it, and it stays out, which means that that little spool on this side that will plug in is out. So I can just pop this in, all right, and then push that in. Now here's the thing about a Roloflex, loading this. You've got this bar here, it has to go under the bar, okay? Normally this would be a lot easier to do, but because I already ripped this out, it's there, it's under. Do I take this piece of paper off? Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Most of the times I don't because I'm loading real quick, right? I'm gonna turn this so that I can, if it doesn't advance, so it was stuck right there, hit the shutter button. So now I can move this around and line it up so that I've got that little hole or like the receiving area of the film. So I just do like this and get it taut. It's not fully on there. Like, it, like I don't have to go to a start number. I don't have to line this up anywhere. I'm just gonna close this. The pressure plate will help me. And then I'm just gonna wind this. And there, it stops at your film. I'm at number one. I don't have to do anything now, right? Little tip. If, if for some reason, like it's not taking a photo, like this is the position it needs to be in that it's cocked right here. And look, it automatically goes in that hole. So like say you're here and nothing's happening, move this back up to this position, then take your photo and you can go. I love this camera because of this lens. This thing wide open is incredible. Um, do I shoot it at F16 or F22? Sometimes if I want to, but uh, F4, F28, F5.6, F8, and everything is just crispy. It is, it's so sharp. Um, one last thing, there is a tripod mount on here, but remember, you're gonna have to take it off that tripod after 12 frames. Why are you shooting, why are you shooting a roll of flex on a tripod? Are you doing super long exposures? If you wanna use a tripod, sure, but I'm telling you, I'm telling you guys, if your subjects aren't moving and it's low light, you can handhold this thing at 15th of a second, no questions asked, and they're tack sharp. I mentioned that this was CLA'd by Harry Fleener, AKA the Roloflex God himself. I don't know that I would invest a lot of money on one of these cameras on eBay that wasn't CLA'd by him. Again, this camera's from 1964. I have no idea what the shutter uh, advanced system's gonna be like. This is probably one of the first thing that goes is inside. Um, I don't know how clean or dirty your lenses are. The first thing I'm always gonna do, even if it's CLA'd by Harry Fleener, is check out this element. The taking element, not the not the viewing, the taking. I want to make sure it is clear of any kind of degradation to the coating of the lens because that's really going to affect how your images look. When I lived in Hawaii, um, every December 7th, December 6th, oh, I've forgotten. It's one of those days, is the uh, commemoration of the attack of Pearl Harbor. And as a citizen, you can just show up. And I brought this camera for six years straight shooting all the vets that were there, basically going around and running around like a, like a chicken with my head cut off, trying to get as many vets in front of me. It's a talking point because they're like, oh wow, I used to have, they call it belly button cameras because you hold it down here, right? I was at the 75th commemoration of the attack on Pearl Harbor, sitting in the back. And there's a guy sitting there in a wheelchair and a, and a man that's kind of pushing him around. This guy looks over at me, he's like, man, that's a really cool camera. I was like, eh, it's... everyone says this. He's like, that's a really cool camera. My brother works on those cameras. I'm like, well, that's really rare. Never have I come in conversation with anyone in my life where someone says, hey, my brother works on Roloflexes. And I was like, oh, that's really interesting. Where is your brother? He's like, oh, he's in California. I'm like, is he in Oceanside, California? He's like, yeah. I'm like, is your brother Harry Fleener? And he said, yes. It was Harry Fleener's brother. And you know who was sitting in that chair right there? Harry Fleener's dad, who was a Pearl Harbor vet. So I took portraits of him and I sent him to Harry Fleener. 
cool little story. And I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. So yeah, I can't give you a, a, a higher stamp of endorsement of getting a camera that's been CLA'd by Harry Fleener, AKA Roloflex God himself. It's going on our store. Did you, did you hear the reluctancy in my voice that it's going on our store? Like I don't want to give it up. I want to shoot a handful of rolls through it. These cameras allow you to have a tool to um, express your vision, who you are as a person, like kind of goes into the images that you make, right? If you're having a problem with your work, like you hate it, we all go through this. All of a sudden you're like, man, everything I'm producing is bull****. I'm sick of this. The first thing I want you to question is what are you consuming? What shows are you watching? What music are you listening to? What music are you not listening to? What shows are you not consuming? What inspires you? What made you want to pick up a camera, right? And whatever those things were, whatever you were inspired by, put this thing down. Leave it alone. Go put it in the closet and go immerse yourself. Find something that's going to light you back up again that's going to make you want to pick this up. Because everything about your aesthetic goes into how you frame, what you choose to point your camera at, and when you choose to hit this shutter. We're going to sell this on our site. By the time this video is up, it's available. Uh, and maybe I'll have a couple bodies of work that I can shoot. I'm going to shoot the last rolls of my Acros through here. I got 20 rolls left. I got to figure out what I'm going to shoot. Because when I got this, I was like, well, let's go tried and true. I only shot Acros through this bad boy. I never really shot color. I shot color a little bit, but Acros, true and true. And I got 20 rolls left. So once my 20 rolls are gone, I will hand you this camera. And somebody's going to make an incredible body of work. I hope you love it as much as I do. It's 2023 and our YouTube channel is hot, hot on fire. Uh, expect more videos of me reviewing cameras that I love. I think the next one I'd really like to do is the ever so elusive and yet underrated and heavy as hell Fuji GX680. It's a 10 pound camera that I hand hold and shoot all the time. Not with a tripod. Like, subscribe, and smash. Here or